Right, and so this puts into context something you said when you were here last time, and we were in this space, and you were standing over there, um, <laughs> and you gave this incredible forum on when whiteness stands its ground in the church. And you said something that we had some conversations about here after you left, which is you said you can't be white and follow Jesus. And, and what a, an incredibly racist comment to make. Could you imagine saying that, but can't be black and follow Jesus? I've had crazy people email me that kind of stuff, by the way, trying to argue stuff from Genesis and all this kind of stuff. Uh, those were people outside of Christ, and they're lying. We're in rebellion against God. Nothing to do with skin color. There's no even mention of skin color. In We're, we're kind of making presumptions and all that about the first few chapters of Genesis, the entire book of Genesis, and the mark of Cain and all this kind of stuff. It's just... You know, like, they'll even say, oh, the mark of Cain is black skin and all this. Disgusting. I was like, oh, you're white? Can't be followed Jesus. Well, Now, to be fair, I know you probably say, well, should I be? But regardless of how heretical the person is, regardless of how much of an antichrist somebody is, we've got to represent their views accurately. Okay, just because we're against a group does not mean the ends justify the means. This happens way too much in discernment circles. Way too much. We give ourselves a bad name a lot of the time. And, yep. and so, which, which I, I think I want you to unpack that a little more, because I'm as Anglo-Saxon as they come. Um, and and, and I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Uh, so in the context of this, what do you mean when you say you can't be white and follow Jesus? Yeah, well, and I still say that and yep. say it even louder. Whiteness and Christianity just don't go together. And one of the ways, by the way, in which you can see that whiteness is this construct that somehow uh, blinds one to the possibilities of uh, the richness of whom God has created us to be and the possibilities of the fullness of the way in which we can live that out into this nebulous so far, no kind of clear definition so far. Sort of just vision that is God's. And so kind of a just vision, social justice. If you deny that, so clearly for this person, for these people, social justice as defined by Marxist or quasi-Marxist or whatever else it is, that is part of the gospel. Now, is that the case for every single person who is pushing social justice, even with a Marxist in? Just not. I mean, we've got to be careful. We may disagree with them. We may, we may deplore their divisive tactics. We may call them to repent, et cetera, and so on. But let's just, you know, they, it's in, in a lot of places, it's in danger of corrupting the gospel. And eventually it will. It will eventually go there. And that's what a lot of people are saying, especially a lot of the 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 founding fathers of the social justice and gospel statement that is online, SGNG, as it's also known. Um, but you see, what's interesting to me, when we look, for instance, and I'll get to the church, when we look, for instance, at Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and all of these other founding fathers, and that on the in the same almost speech sometimes, Abraham Lincoln, uh, to who I always like to say really didn't free that many people, but uh, Abraham Lincoln, when we look at them almost within the same speeches, and certainly for Thomas mm -hmm. Jefferson in the same treatise on... If you cannot treat people within the context in which they lived, then you've no business talking about history at all. Okay? If you cannot realize that you are surrounded with way more information, way more stuff, and you have far more advantage, and you've learned from the past, hopefully, than someone who lived maybe in the 4th century. You know, people complain about Augustine and all this kind of stuff. And why did he believe this? Because that's what everybody believed at the time, sadly. You know, whatever you want to complain about. And rather than complaining about some of the foibles that they had inherited, we've got plenty of them today in our day as well. We're probably not even aware of it. Um... We got to be careful and treat people in their context. It doesn't mean that we say that everything they did was right or anything of the, the period was right. You, uh, hopefully, people understand what I mean. 
the notes from the state of Virginia. He holds these two things that on the one hand, he really honors, because he says it is Anglo-Saxon exceptionalist kind of heritage. And then on the other hand, he talks about this vision. Yeah, heritage. Now, I don't know what the quote is. I'm just going from what she is saying here. Heritage, heritage from Britain. And, you know, what was that? Largely based on the Bible, <laughs> the Reformation. A lot of the, a lot of the prosperity and a lot of the freedoms that Britain had that got exported to to America and the West and so forth, based upon the Bible. I'm not saying that they had every, not everything in in the the documents, either in either country is from the Bible, but the principles. Things like that the king is subject to the law as well. And private property and breaking away from the feudal system that was medieval Europe. And it, say you do have a quotation from, say, the 18th century from Benjamin Franklin. Again, I'm just going what she's saying here, and I'm just commenting on what she's saying here. The heritage passed down. If you've been taught good things, just say you have things you're, you praise God for, Benjamin Franklin or any of these a lot of founder fathers weren't Christians, by the way, but just say, for example, going back generations, you grandfather who was a Christian or father was a Christian, etc. and so on, and they passed it down and, and you praise God for that. And you say, Northern Ireland can say it a lot as well, a Christian heritage. Well, they come into the United States. They were, you know, like, the, like when the, when, the, when the, the War of Independence was going on, you had some people who were loyal to Britain and some people who wanted the, the colonies to break away and form their own nation. So they're talking, they were, up until 1776, British subjects, Anglo-Saxon, they had an Anglo-Saxon heritage. It wasn't like, you can't just derive from that, oh, therefore, oh, white skin. That's a massive jump. And you need something like, you know, say pointing out the black skin was terrible, all this kind of stuff, or, or and if they did, that's deplorable and it's horrible. But just by going by Anglo-Saxon heritage, what, the legal system, biblical values that were found in the laws and things like that, things that were passed on. I'm not... So don't read in to people's statements unless you know what they were talking about in their context and history. Freedom. Now, what is the problem here? The problem is this whiteness gets in the way, mm -hmm. that he can't let go of this human construct of whiteness that says to him that he's entitled in a way in which other people are not entitled. So the Again, he's, she is not presenting anything about, because basically it's this, capitalism, she's basically talking about capitalism and, and you know, what people call Judeo-Christian values. I'm not a big fan of that terminology because, you know, but I digress. Um, but say capitalism or whatever else it is and so you don't like capitalism so you just call it oh i don't know whiteness you can't get away from whiteness because of your skin whiteness and you keep the fruit of your labor doesn't just benefit one person of one race, it benefits everybody if you work hard. What is keeping back I mean, what is keeping back is, are we telling people in the United States, just take the United States, that the black people aren't successful or in Britain that black people aren't successful. They are. You might say, oh, not in the same percentage as white people. Well, why is that? You can't just say, you know, just say, there can be other reasons besides you're being oppressed. 
you can't just look at the fishing industry and say, you know what? There are maybe 99% of them are men and 1% are female. Therefore, in, in the fishing industry, therefore, there must be systemic oppression against women and they can't be fisher fishermen if they um if they want to no the fact is fish being a fisherman is an incredibly difficult job and or bricklaying or whatever some jobs just lend themselves more to there's other factors at play not just you're being oppressed and the, the, there's equality of outcome and there's equality what they want is equality of outcome where everybody ends up in the same part of the race. Every group has the same thing. Or there's equality of access that you have access. If you work hard, if you, you, have, you can go work for this person, but you can go work for another person or whatever else it is, and you keep the fruit of your labor, you work hard, maybe you save, maybe you start a business, what is stopping you from doing that in a place like the United States or a place like Britain or whatever else it is? And it's probably the easiest place on planet Earth probably to do it is, is in the United States or, or places like, I think, you know, Australia. Irish people leave Ireland and are they going to claim that the Irish people are su being suppressed in Ireland? No. And, and then they go down to Australia. I know people who knew from school and stuff like that. They go down and they end up in Australia and then they... they they have their own businesses, they work hard, and they're doing very well for themselves. But, you know, you, you get some people who, who aren't doing well, and then it has to be not that maybe the, the fault lies in you and you, the choices you as an individual has made, maybe, or sometimes maybe you've just been born into a poor family, it's a little bit more difficult, whatever else it is. But you can't just jump to the conclusion that therefore the system is out to get you. The concept of whiteness gets in the way of us understanding who we are, nothing more, nothing less, sacred children of God. And that's pretty damn good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But whiteness blocks that. Mm -hmm. Because whiteness is a construct of privilege. It is a construct of exceptionalism. It is an oppositional construct, which means... So and, and this is how to boil it down. Anybody who doesn't, who, who's in opposition to the social justice, Marxist idea of social justice and um, redistribution of wealth and all that, you stand in opposition to that, you're perpetuating white privilege and you're perpetuating whiteness. And unless you repent of that, you can't be a, a follower of Christ. That's a way to translate it, basically.